Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Chris. And, and likewise, thank to Andrew and to Sharon before that. So listen, there's a lot of information over the last 45 or 50 minutes or, 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 or thereabouts. And just to reiterate, within the, the, the next few days, we'll put up all the slides and we'll put up the recording so you'll have it. Um, so look, we have a lot of questions in. We're going to go into them now in a minute. I'll start first and then I'm going to hand over to Sharon for some and continue to put in your questions there in the questions tab. And for the next 40, 45 minutes or thereabouts, we'll try to answer as many of them. Uh, as we possibly can. So look, uh, so kicking off then a few few quick questions then. So is 2020, uh, and I'll just read it out briefly, is 2023 the only year you can sign up for the scheme? For example, what happens to a young trained farmer? So the, the simple fact of the matter is there's a budget I would have outlined at the start. There's 256 million for this scheme. So just 51.2 million a year. Whether there will be a skep two or even a skep three for that matter, uh, basically depends on how many farmers uh, sign up for the scheme in in this first application period. Obviously, if if uh, not enough sign up, so to speak, to draw down all the money, then there will then there will be further versions of skip. If, however, uh, there's a full quota, so to speak, in this round, then there may not be future ones. So, if someone is eligible now, uh, they'd probably be well advised to apply because there's no guarantee there will be uh, a further one. And even just looking as of this morning, there's just short of 2,500 applications in. Uh, already in the first whatever two weeks, uh, so that's the first question. Uh, next question then: Why, um, why, why will there be no payment for participation in skip training days or courses? So, uh, so unlike BDGP, there will be no payment for for you, the farmer, to attend the training course. So, in BDGP, the farmer got money for attending. Here, they won't. That payment is built into uh, your annual payment that you're getting. So, the annual per hectare payment here is considerably higher than it would have been BDGP. So, the first 15 hectares is, is 225 euro a hectare. As Sharon went through uh, in BDGP, it would have been uh, 142.50 for the first 6.6 .6 hectares. Uh, can, uh, can your partner attend the course or has it to be the herd owner? No. So, it has to be has to be the herd owner. We've been asked uh, a good number of times at um, the, the five public meetings that we've done already is can someone uh, attend that or, or uh, go with that person, so to speak. So that may well be maybe the father or the mother, um, uh, may, may well be elderly, so son or daughter or someone. There's no issue with someone else attending, but that person uh, has to attend the training course. Um, another question: Can I rent the scales as I did in BBS? So yes, you can. Um, so as Chris touched on, effectively the weighing and skip is the same as the weighing in, uh, as was in BBS, of which many farmers did. So the exact same rules apply. So if you own your own scales, fine. Or if you rent the scales, same same as normal. Um, uh, next question: If your yearly reference number is twenty, for example, can you increase? numbers to 30 for example if you desire even though you will not receive payment for the additional 10 so yes you can so to stick with that example there's nothing stopping that farmer uh, whose reference number is 20 but increases over the next few years to 30 35 or whatever um the the the, the scheme does not restrict that but absolutely the cows do not are not payable in the scheme and um, but there's not there's there's no restriction in doing that um okay uh uh to do, uh, is the scheme available to new farmers not previously in in BDGP? Yes, it is. So uh, some farmers um, may well have been in sucklers, uh, as Chris said, even back in 14 and 15, and for whatever reason chose not to apply for BDGP. So this scheme is equally applicable to them, or to even someone that started in, in more recent years, the scheme is applicable to them. Uh, if only 50%, next question, if only 50% of reference numbers is calved by the 13th of November, is the 70% genotyping percentage requirement based on the 50% that calved or the 70% of the reference number. So the date of the 30th of November that Sharon touched on, that's the 30th of November of the, the subsequent year effectively. So if, if as is set out on page nine of um, the terms and conditions, so scheme year one is the 1st of July 22 to the 30th of June 23. So scheme year one is the calves born, calves born between 1 July 22 and the 30th of June 23. The genomic samples must be returned by the 30th of November 23 for them. So in this particular uh, case that this person is asking, uh, they're thinking they're autumn calvers. How are they going to have them all in by the 30th of November? But it's the 30th of November of the subsequent autumn, if you take it for those autumn calvers. And next question then was never in genomics. Do I have to be in it for this scheme? Do you have to be in all five things to be eligible for the scheme? Yes, you do. So all of these actions are payable um, within the scheme. So Sharon would have went through it. And within the terms and conditions on page 14 of it, it sets out how much each of the elements contribute to your payment. So in very rough terms, they're 20% each. So you must you must be committing to do all of them. So whether that's the bull, the replacements, the genomics, the weigh-in, the traits, all of them. Um, 
another question can you enter this scheme if you're in the organic farming scheme yes you can there's no there's no there's no restriction um in that regard and then just before i hand over to sharon uh purchase a bull to go and have no that one is just not 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 legible um okay sharon so i'll hand over to yourself um sharon to, to take us through a few there please thanks david um there's a couple of questions there are you locked into the scheme for the five years Yes, you are locked in. You sign up um, for the duration of the programme, which is from 2023 to 2027. If you decide to leave early, just just you might be changing farming practice. You will have to um, sorry, you will have to pay back any money that was received under the programme. But if there was, say, medical reasons that you had to get out under under force majeure can be looked at and we can see can, can force majeure be triggered. But we will take into everything into account. So are you still suckler farming was a pre-existing condition. But if when, well, if you just join up, you are you are there for the duration of the scheme. So then the next question, what is the deadline for the reducing the reference number each year? and is it done on ag food so if you want to reduce your reference number each year you have to do it in by the end of january of the of the scheme year ag food will be opened to do it that's where you will do it on ag food if if you are not reducing you don't have to do anything it's only if you are reducing you will have to go in in january of each scheme year and reduce down your um your reference number um let me see the next question if i sell calves before the skiing opens can we submit the weights um if you sell them you you must if you weigh them the, the scheme is actually open at the moment so you can submit your weights you must submit your weights within seven days of weighing them so if you're going to sell them get your weights in as soon as possible if I buy a four and five star cow with a calf a foot, is this eligible for the 50% replacements? So once the cow is over four, once it's a female that's over 16 months on the 31st of October, and you bought it in a four, it's genotyped four and five star, this will be eligible on the 31st of October. Um, if someone has a reference number of 10, and they calve down five, are they still required to have five, four and five star females? You are, if, if you calved, if you have a reference of 10 on the 31st of October, you must have 50% females. But if you calve down, the, the sire is actually different. So if you calve down five, you need 80% from a four and five star source. So in that case, you only have to have four, four from a sire four and five stars but the females you still will have to have five of your reference number if someone has a question they're not happy with a reference number how do i appeal so the reference details are based on the years 2016 to 21 if you're not happy with those reference numbers you must apply and then you can put an appeal in and writing you can email it into skep so it's the SCEP email address, it's skep at agriculture.gov.ie, but you must apply. No appeals will be looked at unless an application has been received. Um, so there's cows that calf between mid-July to October. Some calves would be under 15 days of November. Um, all the animals are from the previous year, so Scheme year one is July the 1st, 22 to the 30th of the June, 23. So all your animals will be over 50, 50 days when you go to weigh them because it's the previous year. It starts July 22 to June 23. So there's another question. If a herd, no, how, when does a herd owner know the reference number? If you log into your ag food your reference details are there at the moment if you're having any problems logging into ag food you can ring the help desk and someone in the skep section will be able to go through your reference details with you but it is available at the moment on your ag food account um someone that calved 22 cows in last year so for skep there's only 16 to date will this affect the reference number as the reference number seems to be 16 so it is based on your animals between 2016 to 21 so 22 does not count so your reference if your reference that you calved was 
60 in, in those years, 16 to 21, that's what your reference is. 22 does not count towards your reference details. Um, sorry, have you, I'm just trying to read questions here. Explain how to calculate the payment again, please. So I just go through the payments again. If someone has a reference number of 10, you divide that by 1.5 in order to get your max payable area. So all your reference numbers are divided by 1.5 to get your max payable area. So someone with a reference of 10 has a max payable area of 6.67. So therefore, in this case, all the payments will be at 225 euros. Your full 6.67 will be at 225 euros. You have to have enough eligible forage hectares to meet that 6.67 as well as meeting all your requirements of the programme. If someone is greater than 15 of an, a max payable area, so the first 15 is, two, is at 225 euro and everything after that is at 180 euro. Um, there's another question there. Someone that has an annual reference of 50, do you need to keep 50 cows to receive payment? Can you cut back and still get payments? Yes, you don't actually have to hold the 50 cows on your holding. The 50 cows, so if someone has a reference of 50, again, the payment is on the land. So someone with 50 would have a max payable area, a torch 3.33. You need to have torch tree, tree point tree tree eligible forage hectares on your BIS application, but all your percentage requirements are based on your reference of 50. So if you have a reference of 50, you have to have to calf down 25, you have to calf down 50%. So this is actually not a target. This is a, the minimum floor that you can do. So you can calf down to 50 or you can only calf down 25 if that's what you want. You would have to have 70% genomics of your 50 done. You would have to have 80% four and five star females. You'd have to 25 of them on the 31st of October. You would have to have 80% from a four and five star source. So sired by a four and five star AI or a four and five star bull. So just think that the 50 is what all your percentage requirements are actually based on. So once you meet them, you could do what you want with the other cows, but it's it's a minimum requirement. So just bear that in mind. It's only a minimum requirement you need to do. We're not stopping you from calving down more or doing anything else, weighing more, etc. Um, All right, Sharon, you, we might go on, take, take, take one more and then I'm going to hand over. I'm just going to do one or two and then I'm going to hand over to Andrew, please. Grand, there's one there. Would you get paid on a calf that dies or is born dead? So this is actually excluded from your commitment. So if you have to do your your data recording, if the cow is dead, the calf is dead, you do not have to put in the data recording. You will not have to weigh them. So they are excluded, but there'll be no penalty on the payment for these if the calf is born dead. Are okay, David. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Yeah, we'll Thank and we'll you. come back to you because we'll do we'll do another loop in a minute. And maybe just to pick up on something that that Sharon said, just under fifty percent. Um, for for the to keep the simple maths for me, so if you're ten cows, you must have a minimum of fifty percent of them. So we're not, and most people don't keep cows, not but not to have a calf. That's the only way, obviously, in suckler that you that you that you have a way and to sell. But that's to be abundantly clear. That's the floor below which you can fall. So if for argument's sake, I came into this game and I had my 10 cows and they're from my MPA of 6.66 and I meet all of my commitments every year, all the way in, the calving, everything the whole way. But I come along to year five and for whatever reason, I only calve down three of my 10 cows. That's an eligibility requirement that Sharon would have touched on. And that unfortunately means the person is not not alone not getting paid in year five, but, they're, but we're unfortunately taking all the money back off them. So... The reason we're saying you must calve down a minimum of 50% is in BDGP, there was no explicit requirement to calve down cows. So it's an absolute minimum that you must calve down a 50%, but that's not a target. It's a floor below which you can't fall. So obviously people, we need to be aiming for considerably higher than that and to be aiming to calve down uh, all the cows. And then one last thing before I hand over to Andrew, someone's just asking how do you put in a question? So there's literally heaps of questions after coming here. So there's a little questions tab there and you just type in your question and we, we, uh, we see them all. 
Okay, Andrew, I'll hand over to, to see yourself then for, for yours, please. Yeah, perfect. Hopefully my audio is back on. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to broadly group these into, because there's a few questions there, but I can kind of put them into topics. So the first one been around records and keeping records. So uh, for anyone joining the scheme afresh, uh, you're required six months records before your first audit. So typically you would have these anyway. So again, it's a case of if you're interested in joining the SCEP, um, certainly submit your application. Any particular questions you have on your own farm and, and your own scenario, maybe call the help desk just to get individual advice. Um, questions there around kind of organic certification. So organic certification isn't something that's recognized by Borby at the moment. There are conversations around streamlining all of that into the future, but at the moment, no. But there are a good few organic uh, certified beef production um, systems in Borby already. So in relation to the question on, on remedies and recording the remedies for organics, shouldn't cause a problem for, for the SBAS audit. Um, sorry, now the, the questions are kind of moving on me. The requirement, uh, can you can you be, is it possible to be Borby certified before October 20, 2023? Of course there is. Uh, what I'd suggest is you need to actually start to register now though. Don't delay this until September. Uh, the sooner you register with us, uh, the better in terms of us getting the resources in place to do your audit. The As I kind of called out earlier on, it's a kind of six week lead time from the date of your audit to when you will be certified. If you've no non-conformance, that will obviously be a lot shorter but we won't know until you do your audit what, what we might need to do to close it out. Um, in relation to, you know, if you're already in, in SBLAS, uh, your, your renewals and stuff should happen before your cert expires, so that shouldn't cause you any issues at all. It, it's an 18-month certification program. We tend, we're aiming to do the audits around month 16 of that, so that your cert doesn't lapse before uh, your new cert kicks in. That's something just to call out. You don't lose time on a Borby audit by taking it before the 18 months before your cert expiry. In fact, that's when you're supposed to do it. Um, in relation to uh, membership fees, there are no membership fees. So farmers don't pay anything to Borby it to join any of the, the SBLAS or SDAS standards. So that's straightforward enough. Pesticide records, there's a question there in relation to would we accept the iGAS book? Don't really know what uh, the record required in IGAS, but I'd imagine it lines up with the DAFM pesticide record. If that's the case, that's the same uh, way we line up. So it's basically the requirement of pesticide records that DAFM would set is what's in the Borbia standard. Um, how often are the audits? They're every 18 months. Uh, so again, touching on that, we're aiming to do your audit now then your cert lasts for, for 18 months. We're, we're looking to do your audit around month 16. And then your new cert, once you're certified again, kicks in again. Question on updates to the board based standard. You know, about this been a five-year program. Look, there's no, in, in relation to standards, they do move uh, from time to time. Um, but in relation to how they're developed, they are developed uh, in association with the industry as such. So all the farm organizations, et cetera, would be involved in the committees that approve and write the Borbia standards. So I don't think there's going to be anything drastic changing over the period of this program and, and any changes that do come in are agreed with the industry beforehand. So it's not a case of, of we just shift the goalposts. That's, that's not how it works. Um, I think that's probably a lot of it, David. I'll, I'll review the, the rest of them, see if I've missed anything and you can come back around to me. Yeah, perfect. That's thanks. Yeah, just a few more there, um, Andrew, because they'll keep coming in. So we'll do another loop at uh, at the end. Cool. Come back to you. Okay, so I'm going to hand over then to Chris. Then Chris. So there, there's a there's a good chunk then, Chris, probably from your side, particularly around the genomics piece. So if you want to take a, a last attempt. Yeah. Please. So I'll uh, I'll just work down through them here. Um, in a second. Oh. Um, so the first one I can see there, a farmer who's in DNA rage and his animals are, um, one second, oh, farmer and genotype to birth. Yeah, so those those samples that you're submitting through, through the DNA registration pilot, they can be counted towards um, your your SCEP requirement. So you won't have to genotype more animals outside of the, the DNA reg. Um, let's see what's next. Okay, can cows be terminal stars? No, for the so for the females, females only qualify based on their replacement index. So they have to be four or five stars within or across breed on the replacement index. The terminal stars only count for stock bulls. So with stock bulls, 
or sorry, AI bulls for that matter, they can be four or five stars on either the replacement or the terminal index, but the females are replacement index only. Um, going down here. Okay, can you take hair samples instead of tagging as autumn calves from 2022 will be pretty large now to tag? Well, Look, it's 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 tags are sent out as a standard, and as I said, look, it'll probably be another month to six weeks before tags are realistically out on farms. Um, we'd rather you take tags where possible because the DNA quality from tags is much better from a tissue sample as opposed to hair samples. Um, so look, hair cards we we do send out hair cards where tags get broken. Uh, for example, but we try and avoid it. Uh, we'd like you to uh, to use the the tags instead. Um, cows were four or five stars when they came into the herd, but are now three stars do they come towards? So if they were genotype four and five stars before and in your herd, and maybe now have dropped to three stars, those animals will remain eligible. So they could have been females that were eligible under BDGP. Um, they will remain eligible into the new program. So yeah, they'll be fine. Um, that's that one. I've had cows calving since July 2022 and weights were uploaded to ICBF. Some dams may have left since. With us. Yeah, so like weights that were already recorded, say earlier this year, or even at the back end of last year. So for calves, it's it's calves born from the 1st of July 2022 to the 30th of June 2023. They're the animals in scheme year one for weighing. Um, so if you weighed some of those animals, um, there's there's no issue there. Those weights will count provided you have them put in and provided the... the um, Cows and calves were weighed on the same day. Uh, half of my calves were off a five-star stock bull, which I sold a month ago. The other half are off AI. Will my calves qualify? Yeah, so like the bull might be gone, but that's fine. Like if he was a genotype four and five-star bull, um, then then it's fine. There's no issue there. Um, that's all. That's all okay. Um, so just working down through them. So I was in BDGP and nearly all cows and herd of genes. I currently have uh, nine, four and five star cows. How many do I need to tag in the final year? Skip and cas we tag to make up the... Sorry, this keeps moving on me. Um, after losing where I was, no. I can, I can take a few there, Chris, if you want to find out, if you want to try try find them there. So there's a couple no, of questions I, in there. You have them? Yeah, right. I have it there again. Um, so, uh, form five star. How many do I need to tag in the final year? Skip and cas we tag to make up the requirements. Uh, once tagged, can they uh, can can they leave the herd once five once all? So look, there's a few questions there. Um, how many do I need to tag in the final year? Skip. So you're you're tagging seventy percent of your whatever your annual reference number is every year. So that all depends. So if you have a reference number of twenty, you'll be tagging uh, fourteen animals, which is seventy percent. Um, any animals can be tagged provided they're beef sired. So you know, they could be bought in animals. They could be animals born within the herd. It could be cows, calves, weanlings. That that doesn't matter. You can tag any animals. Can they be sold uh, once they're tagged? Yeah. Um. The only thing you're not allowed to sell or look, that you'd be penalized for selling early would be calves if you sell the calves at less than five months old. Any other animals, you could take the tissue sample and they could go into the lorry, to the market or the factory or whatever the case may be. There's there's no issue there. Um, okay, I don't know. So that's the reference number. So there's a question here on the VAT for genotyping. So look, ICBF puts up the uh, your invoice for the genotyping every year. And if you are VAT registered and want to claim back VAT, you can just get that invoice uh, and you can log into your ICBF account and you can get the invoice there. Or if not, look, you can ring up ICBF, we can post it out to you. There's no issue there, but those invoices are available. Um, just working down, how do I get my stock bull star rating? So look, all pedigree registered bulls have star ratings. If you're inquiring about the, the stars of your stock bull or, or your animals, you can uh, you can just ring up ICBF. There's actually reports going out to herds that aren't in Herd Plus today. So all suckler herds essentially that, that aren't in the Herd Plus service, we sent them out uh, basically a letter and a listing of all of their, their cows, just letting them know what their star ratings are. So a lot of those will be arriving in the post um, tomorrow. 
So that's that one. How do you fulfill the female eligibility requirement of majority or calves or male? So I suppose whether you're in a scheme or not in a scheme, your replacements have to come from somewhere. So look, there may be a given year that you have a lot of bull calves. Um, but you know, if you don't have enough heifers, you're you're probably going to have to source maybe buy them in. So um, what this what in this instance, it's just saying that whatever that that you know for so for year one, at least fifty percent of your reference number has to be genotype four and five star females. So that can be heifers over sixteen months or, or cows. Um, you know, so like I said, even if you weren't in a scheme and you're getting a lot of male calves, you know, your replacements are going to have to come from, from somewhere. Um, how does data be submitted for calves born from July 2023? So look, data can be recorded either through forms or online. Um, look, online is obviously, a, I suppose not a preferred option, but if you can do it online, look, it saves a lot of hassle because once you put it in online and you click save, you know that it's submitted, whereas, you know, filling out forms and you're having to post them and stuff and look sometimes stuff can get lost so filling stuff in online is 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 a better option if if you can do that um just keep going so how soon can we genotype calves so look we're looking to get samples out as early as possible one thing i didn't mention earlier is the sooner that you sign up with the department the sooner icbf can be told that your your herd is participating in the program and then we can we can work on issuing tags to you um next one i'm trying to synchronize my herd and condense the calving period this year leave a big gap for some cows affect the star rating i.e three six five until okay i suppose look the, the, the way the star ratings work is they they're comparing animals within a herd um so look if 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 a good number of the animals in the herd are losing a bit in calving interval because you're you're letting them slip from maybe spring to autumn um look that's not going to have a, a, a massive increase or a massive in impact on the star ratings of your animals. So look, I wouldn't be overly worried about that. Um, so one second, I have 30 cows and two bulls, but for 10 cows, I lost the paper. It says which bull will do I have to do? So look, that's probably maybe more one for the department. It was the one above, I was looking at, I have two stock bulls. Only one is five star. Uh, if some more, then I taught you up off the three star scheme for yeah. So look, if if more than twenty percent of the calves are off an ineligible bull, so we'll say a genotype one, two, or three star bull, then look, you would run into a bit of bother. There is a derogation in year one, but I suppose going forward, you just need to make sure that at least eighty percent of the calves are out of a, a four and five star bull. Um, I'd say I've gotten most of them there. All right. Um... Thanks, Chris. We'll we'll do we'll do one more we'll do more and more loops. So anything else that's come in late, then we'll we'll come back to you, um, Chris. So thanks for that. Okay, I'll I'll just take a few more then before I hand over then to Sharon. So just a few more that have come in. There is um, I can find it here. I had it a minute ago. Oh yeah, do the seventy percent to do the seventy percent to be genotyped have to be born before the end of June? So that's something we touched on before. So. The seventy percent to be genotyped, and they must be submitted, as Sharon said, by the thirtieth of November. So, the the ones that have to be in by the thirtieth of November, twenty twenty three, are those calves that were born in scheme year one, which is one July twenty two to the thirtieth of June twenty three. Um, right. There's a couple of questions in here on derogations for rare breeds. So there's four there's four rare breeds recognised. Um, so to speak, within within SCEP and set out on page four of the terms and conditions. So they're the same four rare Irish bovine breeds that are within acres. So the Dexter, the Mile, the Drimmon uh, and, and the Kerry. And the der any derogation, so to speak, in respect to them is only in respect of action one. So that's the 80%, the, the four and five stars that Chris just touched on a minute ago. So as it, and I'll just read it out then. So it's set out on page eight of it. So for those participants using the, the rare breed sires, those four that we just mentioned a minute ago, a derogation to the annual targets under this action may be granted in certain circumstances. So we may look at them in certain circumstances, but that shouldn't be seen as if someone can meet it, they should obviously try to meet it, but they're the only four Irish bovine rare breeds that we'd look at in, in the event they had some difficulty in respect to that action one. Okay, a number of other questions around um, what if someone loses rented land? So Sharon touched on earlier on, how, how the payment is calculated. So very simply, if my reference number was 20, I need to have uh, an MPA, this maximum payable area of 13.33 hectares. So I'm signing up for a contract. I have to meet all the commitments that, that all the actions that we went through and that Sharon has went through. And I have to have 
I did uh, and I had to submit my BPS and annually I must have a determined base eligible area of at least 13.33 hectares. If for whatever reason I lose some land, whether I sell land or, or uh, lost lease land or, or rent the ground, con acre ground, if I fall if I fall between 80 and 100% of it, I'm getting a pro rata payment. Uh, if I fall below 80% of it, so in my 13.33 hectares, uh, if I fall below 10 and a half hectares, very quick calculation, if I fall below 10 and a half hectares, I'm not going to get paid in the scheme for that year, but I'm still alive, so to speak, in the scheme. That's unlike BDGP. If someone fell below that 80% in BDGP, they were unfortunately removed from the scheme. So in this, they're, they're, they're kept alive, but they won't receive a payment until they go back up or, up to and over 80% and ideally over over the 100%. Okay, can I, uh, uh, Chris touching that, can I sell calves less than five months if I stay above? So you have to keep the calves for at least five months for um, the traits, that's for action five. Uh, what happens if you lose um, lease land? We cover that. Uh, if I have 17 cows this year, how many geno, geno testing tags do I need to order? So it's 70% um, of that number. And then another question here before I hand over to um, Sharon. So if I have a reference, if I have a reference of 29 CAV 15, is it 15 I'd be paid on? So as Sharon touched on, so first of all, it's an area-based payment. So 29, if 29 is your reference number, we're dividing by 1.5. So you need to have a maximum, you need to have 19, at least 19.33 hectares of MPA of this base determined area every year and you must calve down at least 50% of them. And I stress at least 50%, because if somebody falls below that 50%, it's eligibility to remove from the program. So obviously if you have 29 cows and you're putting 29 cows to the bull, all things being equal, you're hoping you're going to end up with 24 or 25 or maybe more calves. But if, if, if for some reason you only calved 52 or 53% of them, you're still alive within the scheme. But if you fall below that 50%, um, you have a problem. Um, that's probably it for me for the moment, Sharon. I'll hand back over to yourself then and I'll, we'll get a few more. Thanks, David. There's a couple of questions there. Is there a maximum payment? Each farmer has their own maximum payment. That's your max payable area. So it's your reference number divided by 1.5, which gives you your max payable area. So that is the most you will be paid on. If someone has a max payable area of 10, they have to have 10 eligible forage hectares declared on the base application and meet all the requirements. But there's nothing stopping anybody having any extra cows or anything else like that, but they will not get paid any more than their max payable area. How The next question, how is your reference number calculated for a new entrant? The new entrant must um, tell us, he must declare his own reference number. So that is all the animals that he thinks he will calf between July 22 to June 23. We will then verify it. So if someone puts in 10 and it's found that the the number of calves, that ca the animals that calved was only nine, we will actually change it. So we will verify it. Um, so the new entrant tells us what he thinks he's going to calf between July of last year to June of this year. If someone, just the next question, if someone changes a farming practice in, in year three, what is the clawback? So if someone changes farming practice, you will have to pay back any money paid under the program. So that will be your full payments for years one and two if you change it in year three. Um, there's a question there, what is the cost of the genomics of each animal to the farmer? The cost of genomics is 20 euro per animal, which will be deducted from your annual payment. Um, the next question, are training days free? Yes, there's no cost for attending the training days. Um, there's a question, when weighing cows and calf, is it 80% of the cows calved in the year or is it 80% of the reference number? So it's actually 80% of the cows calved, of the eligible ca uh, cows calved to a maximum of the reference number. So I'll give you an example. If someone has a reference of 10, they must calve down a minimum of five. Therefore, they have to weigh 80% of the five, which will be four. If someone has a reference of 10 and they calve down 10, they must weigh eight because it's 80% of the 10. If someone has a reference of 10 but calves down more, so if they calve down 20, 
they still only have to weigh eight because it's up to a maximum of their reference number. Um, is there a calculator that we can calculate before we apply? There is no actual calculator. The system will, will calculate your max payable area. So when you put in your program reference number that you put in on the system on your yearly reference number, the system will calculate your max payable area. But there's not a calculator telling you what 50% of your reference number is for your eligible calves. All the percentages are in the terms and conditions. So you'll need to refer to the terms and conditions to see what your percentages are of your reference number. Um, there's another question. If there's a joint herd number, do both have to attend the training? Yes, anybody on the herd number will have to attend the training. So if it's in two names, the two people will need to attend the training because you're both signing up to, to participate in the programme. Um, there's another question. Can I enter the new BEEP scheme without entering SCEP? SCEP is a standalone scheme. So any new schemes that come down the line are standalone. You don't have to be in SCEP to be in any other scheme. So yes, you can enter the new scheme without being in SCEP. I think that's it now for me, David. Will I hand you over to Andrew now? Yeah, please. Um... Please, Sharon. Andrew, then there's a few more on your side then, if you can take them, please. Yeah, and, and just broadly speaking, because the volume of questions there, if there's anything specific to a farm, I'm not getting into it. So again, the help desk number is available. So if you if you have a question directly about Borbia and how it applies to your farm, best to reach out to the help desk. So just some of the general questions then, what percentage of, of suckler farms fail the Borbia audit? Uh, look, it, it would be hard to, to, to take that number out of the overall, but it's certainly kind of in around that one percent uh, bracket and again the term fail is incorrect it's it's just where a farm has gone through the audit process and doesn't close out so again it, at that point it's nearly more the farmer has opted out of closing out their audit than to fail the audit process as such so it's kind of in control of the farmer in terms of whether he achieves certification or not um uh, query there on the remedy records and keeping the remedy purchase records if your purchase records receipts are in date order, provided all the information is, is on those uh, receipts that you're getting from your vet or wherever, that's perfectly acceptable. It's actually called out in the standard as one of the acceptable methods of keeping the purchase records. Um, getting getting additional books from Borbia, no problem at all. Just reach out to the help desk again there to support you. So if you've anything that you require in terms of templates or questions you want answered, uh, just call out to the help desk. And then kind of the final one is about the, the financial rewards for being in the Borbia scheme. Ultimately, look, Borbia don't charge a fee for you to join the scheme and neither do Borbia pay out any kind of bonuses or, you know, there's no payment for being certified against the standard, I suppose. The, the incentives come from the marketplace. In regards to SCEP, I suppose, unless you're Borbia certified at this point in time, you can't be uh, drawn down on the payment from the department. So ultimately, I suppose the, the kind of fringe benefits to Borbia certification for farmers are that, look, you have peace of mind that it, if you've gone through a Borbia audit, you'll be in, in a healthy place if you ever have a department cross uh, compliance inspection. Um, you know, you have an independent pair of eyes coming in on the farm that can point out any kind of health and safety risks that might be there that you, 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 you don't notice yourself. You know, we're all guilty of not being able to see the wood from the trees kind of a thing. So it, it's really more, you know, that uh, eventually the hope is that the marketplace will return something. I know my colleagues on the sectors team, for example, are working on on a suckler, you know, kind of um, recognition program and kind of how that can be positioned internationally, you know, across European markets and stuff. So ultimately, I suppose, hopefully down the road, yes, there will be some marketplace incentive. But again, those incentives don't come from Borbia, they come from the marketplace. So that's broadly the questions, David. Um, Okay, here. thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Andrew. Okay, I'll just take a few there before I before I go over to Chris. Then, so there's a couple um, in there. Uh, do you have to apply for SCEP before you get a reference number? So your your reference number is part of your SCEP application. So the same as Sharon would have touched on in her second presentation, and which we'll put up in the next couple of days. Uh, as part of your application, we're going to present you with your reference numbers for 16 to 21. And it'll the system, so to speak, will automatically pick the three best years, and then you can select a lower number uh, if you so wish. Uh, what if I have more land than, than than cows? So that's no issue. So take the example of the person with 20 cows and a maximum payable area. They have to 
that maximum payable area for us is 13.33 hectares, but they may well have 50 or 60 hectares because they have, a, they have a, whether it be uh, they're milking cows or they have an arable enterprise or whatever it is, the 13.33 hectares is of base forage the determined eligible area as set out in the terms and conditions of the scheme. So in general, most farmers will have more land and that's not an issue. What we're looking for is they have a minimum of 13.33 for that example for the 20 cows. When will the training start? Um, best case scenario, because it's not even gone out for procurement yet, because obviously we have to wait to see how many farmers apply for the scheme. There will be a third party provider. Uh, realistically, it won't be before the autumn of this year. Um, will there be a scheme payable on a per cow basis in addition to SCEP? Sharon touched on that already. I know the Minister's already talked about um, having a, a, a further uh, iteration of BFS. It'll typically be called the Beef Welfare Scheme and it'll be uh, sometime uh, towards the middle of the summer, probably July or August time. Uh, another question, I have a quote of three animals. One, is it worth joining SCEP? And two, is there a method of purchasing or increasing SCEP quota as I now have 10 cows? So no, it's not tradable is the first thing and um, so it obviously it's up to every farmer to decide whether it's worth their while coming in or not depending on whether they have three or ten or thirty three and um, but there you can increase your cow numbers through it as we said earlier on but they won't they would not be payable within the scheme and another question when i go to apply for the scheme through ag food it says i don't have authorized access why is this so it's first and foremost it's an online application as sharon touched on so there's no paper applications here so first and foremost you need to get access to ag food if you don't already have it or where you don't want it but you want an advisor to apply on your behalf then you need to select someone from the fas approved list so if you go into the agriculture.gov.e website you'll see the list of all uh, FAS approved advisors there's approximately 850 odd advisors there at the moment and it's important to make sure that your advisor is on that um okay just before i hand over to um to chris do you have to have a four or five star bull and herd in 30 june no so that was the requirement of bdgp that requirement is not there now um as both chris and sharon would have touched on the first action action one which is the 80 percent so 80 percent of your albeit as a derogation in scheme year one 80 percent of your your cars must come from four or five star sources so whether that's a bull or ai or if you use a combination of a, of a bull and ai so there's no requirement to have a bull on the 30th of june um, I have st I have a, I have two stock bulls. Only one is five star. If some more than I thought show up as a three star, will that put me out of the scheme? So as Chris touched on, at least eighty percent must come from the five, five from a five star. So yes, you could have a handful of calves, so to speak, from a from a non four or five star source. But if bottom line, if you were running uh, bulls, two bulls, you'd probably be better off to make sure that they're both of a four or five star. Uh, can you explain the replacement strategy again? So Sharon would have touched on it, set out on page eight of the terms and conditions. So there's three key dates. 50% of your of your um, reference number must be four or five stars by the 31st of October, 2023. That increases to 65% by the 30, on the 31st of October, 2025, and to 75% by the 31st of October, 2027. But for any farmers that were already in BDGP, as Chris's last slide when he finished up would have went through, many farmers were nearly already at the 70 or 75% requirement. So uh, it probably will be a greater hurdle for farmers that weren't in BDGP, and it will absolutely be a hurdle for some farmers in BDGP, but for many, it won't. And then, um, if two stock bulls can plan, yeah, that's it. Okay, all right, Chris, I'll hand, over, I'll hand over to yourself, Chris, if you can take a chunk of yours, and we'll finish up now in the next five or six minutes. Yeah, Thanks, so Chris. just picking up there, I think where I left off. So I've thirty. Sorry, you got that one. Uh, so I've a considerable number of females genotyped already due to BGP. What happens in a year where we only have low number of female calves with males? Yeah, so we will we 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 can use males for the genotyping. It's not just females, so you'd be fine in that regard. And um, the only way you would get cut out, for example, is if you cut down a lot uh, from your reference number and after a few years of the program, all of the mature animals in the herd are genotyped, so you would be depending on new calves every year. But if you dropped below 70% uh, in terms of the number of calves being born every year, you actually mightn't have enough new animals. But unless that happens, you know, you don't have to have all heifer calves, male calves can be used. Um, I have calves born in November, how do I submit weights? So you can submit weights now on ICBF by logging into the ICBF, your ICBF account. Uh, if you're unsure to do that, just give ICBF a ring. Um, might just call out the number there if people are unsure. It's 023 8820452. So just give ICBF a ring. We can give you your login details 
or if not, we can <clears throat> maybe send out forms to you to record weights. Um, so to parent B best scheme, but it wasn't part of the BGP scheme, will this be a disadvantage? I mean, look, the only disadvantage you'd be at over herds over in BGP is your animals probably aren't genotype for the most part. Um, look, there's no reason that you couldn't meet all of the targets in BDGP. Like there will be quite a lot of new entrants in the scheme. As I said, provided you have enough four and five star females in the herd, the first year's genotyping uh, will will help you to meet that 50% target in 2023. Uh, tried submitting weights on ICBF the end scheme uh, is not. So like if you are submitting weights at the moment, you just go to the ordinary weight recording screen in ICBF. So when you log into your ICBF account, go to record events and just select weight. And at the top of the screen, you just put in the date the animals were weighed and you'd work down all of the animals in your herd will be listed. And you just work down through it and uh, put in the weights and click save at the bottom. So it's not a scheme specific screen. You can just put them in through the ordinary weight recording screen. If 70% of my cows must be genotyped over fishing, must I buy extra cows to facilitate this? No, so like once all of the cows are genotyped, we'll just start genotyping younger animals. Um, like you'll have new calves born every year. The only way that you would get caught to buy animals to genotype is if you weren't hitting your 70%. So that would only happen whereby uh, you cut away back on your uh, reference number. So take, for example, if your herd reference number is 30, you'd be genotyping 21 animals, 70%. But let's just say you cut back down to, say, 18 cows. You'd still be compliant in the scheme because you're calving over 50% of your reference number. But you might run into trouble in that you wouldn't have enough new animals to genotype every year. So it's only where you'd cut away back on numbers that you would be in bother. If a five-star replacement cow has a heifer calf by a five-star terminal bull, and the replacement index of the, so I presume you're saying if the resultant heifer calf from that mating has a one star on the replacement index, will that do well? If you want to counter towards your targets, no, it wouldn't because the heifer calf has to qualify on the replacement index within her own right. So it's not just the case that if the bull is eligible, that all of the daughters are then eligible for the targets. Um, that heifer would have to be genotyped. And she would have to be either four or five stars on the replacement index to qualify it in herself. Um, so if a cow loses her calf at birth and you buy a four or five star calf, does she get paid on? So, I mean, if a calf dies at birth, you're not penalized because that's allowed for in the scheme. You, you're not required to weigh them or submit um, data on them. You could buy in a foster calf and it like it would be a... If, if it would be an advantage if it was a heifer calf and four or five stars because that heifer calf could then be kept uh, as a replacement in the herd. Um, if a cow was four star under BGP, there was no drop to three stars, she's still ineligible. So yeah, if she was genotyped in four or five stars under BGP and she was counted as an eligible female and she's still in your herd, she still remains eligible for the new program for SCEP. Um, they're all ones for the department. If a lot of your older animals are already genotyped and you don't have 70% females taken males to use. So again, yeah, a question earlier, males can be used for genotyping. There's no issue there. Um, so if a person has a reference number 20 and calves 11 cows, can the other female animals be nine heifers? So you don't actually have to have 20 animals. In that case, if your reference number is 20, um, it's not a case of like, I need, 20 um, eligible females, you have to meet the targets. So in year one, it's 50% of your reference number. So you would only need 10 genotype four and five star females. They can either be cows or females over 16 months. You don't have to actually have the, the actual reference number in genotype four or five star females. Um, if genotype samples are not out till May, June and yearling sold before tags. Look, yeah, so in some instances, herds might be autumn calving. They may be selling weanlings maybe selling yearlings. Herds are calving at all different times of the year, but you have to remember that you'll have calves born again next autumn. So you might be calving again from August, September, and those animals can be genotyped in. So if you don't have enough animals to genotype, no, ICBF can wait to send you tags or samples till later on in the year when you do have enough animals available. Um, so they're all the parpon ones, 16 cows. How many four or five stars do you need to be next year? Um, 
But if a bully was five stars when he entered the hard, but over the period of BG, he dropped to three. Yeah, so that bully again will be eligible. So if he was genotype four or five star in the BDGP and he was eligible, he's been in your herd all along. He's still eligible now, even though he might he might only be three star. So there's there's no issue there. Um, if we do not have enough hair for gene type, what happens? Yeah, again, bull calves can be used there. Um, well, that's for the department land. Who's a calf? Let's see. So if in, if in any year I'm short of animals for gene type, can I buy in some calves to make up the target figure? Yeah, so you can do that, but they'd have to be beef sired. So let's say you couldn't go to the mart and buy, say, Frisian bull calves because they're dairy animals. You could buy first crosses out of the dairy herd. So maybe Herefords out of dairy cows or limousines or whatever the case may be. It, they just have to be beef sired animals to qualify for the genotyping of BGP. Um, do starians or the cows carry on from BGP scheme? So yeah, if they were four or five star genotyped and eligible in BGP, they'll be eligible in skip. Um, so I think, I think I've gotten most of them there, uh, David. All right. Okay. Thanks. Um, thanks, Chris. Okay. We're just coming up now to, to nearly finishing time here. So just a couple of more then just to, to tidy up there. Uh, just some that have come in the last few minutes there. So is there a minimum age for weighing as Chris touched on yet? So it's 50 days. Can can someone weigh their, their stock, so to speak, a couple of times through the year? Yes. Yeah, so look, if for argument's sake, somebody had 10 calves born in the autumn and 10 spring calves, they might want to weigh them at different times. That's entirely up to themselves. Uh, so no issue from our side. Someone is just asking for a bit of clarity just once again on the payment. So just very quickly here, just wrote them down. So if you have 20, if if your yearly reference number is 20 and you meet all the commitments that we've went through, so all the various actions, you must have an MPA of 13.33 hectares, at least 13.33 hectares. And in that case, that gets multiplied by 225 euros per hectare. So the first 15 hectares is at 225. So that would be a payment of 3,000 euros. If, for argument's sake, the farmer next door had 30 cows, this is a different scenario, they would they meet all of the commitments that are set down. They have an MPA, um, the minimum they need is 20 hectares. They then would have 15 hectares payable at 225, which is 3,375, and five hectares payable at 180, which is 900, leaving a total of 4,275. So the 20 cows, 13.33 hectares, assuming they meet all the requirements, 3,000 euros, the 30 cows, MPA of 20 hectares, assuming to meet all the requirements, 4275. And then the last thing, just there's a, within the terms and conditions, there's a couple of important points and Sharon would have touched on many of them in terms of the application. So there's probably three important numbers here. So the reference number is the number that we are, we're giving you, so to speak, the three best years of that period, 16 to 21. So if you assume for a moment, I, have, I was a farmer and my reference number was 22 cows. Then as part of the application, as Sharon went through, the farmer can set their program reference number. And that can be any number below 22. There's no restriction. You could go down to one or two if that's what you so wish. But if you assume for a moment, I set my program reference number at 20 cows. I then have to set, as Sharon went through, the yearly reference number. And that can be up to 20% below the, the, the program reference number. So my reference number was 22. I set my program reference number at 20 for whatever reason, I can go 20% below that. So in this case, down to 16. So if in schema one or two, I decided I want to go down to 16 for whatever reason, I can go back up to the program reference number of 20, okay, with no, with no issue, but I can I can never go back up to 22. So once you set your program reference number, that's the, the ceiling, um, so to speak, that you can never um, go through again. Okay, listen, the conscious of time, it's 10, to, it's 10 to 9 and we're starting to lose people. So we've had over 700 people on the webinar there from, from the very start. So we hope that people have found it useful and that they've got good information and they're better informed now than they were when they logged on at seven o'clock. Just a point of clarification that Andrew um, has touched on just there in terms of Borbia, when he makes mention of the help desk, just to make sure there's no, because obviously we have a help desk, help desk function here within direct payments as well. So the, the help desk that Andrew refers to is that help desk that's manned, as he said, by FRS staff on the, on the board BIA side. So just if you have any board BIA queries, that's the help desk you, you should go to. If you have any other queries in terms of SCEP, you can obviously come to ourselves in the department uh, or to Chris and his colleagues in, in ICBF. There's an email address there, SCEP at Agriculture. Um, the only other thing just to say is to thanks to, to Sharon, to Chris and to Andrew and to our colleagues in Borbia and, and ICBF and for Maria for sharing the slides and to Joe, our IT guy who set everything up. Um, 
we hope you have found it useful. We hope you're better informed now than when, than when you uh, logged on. And just to be mindful, the closing date is the 22nd of May. While someone can apply late for 25 days thereafter, that you get a penalty. So if you're going to apply, please do so um, before the 22nd of May. And the last reminder, just to say, we have four more meetings, public meetings, uh, Bantry the 18th of April, Tralee the 20th, Letterkenny the 2nd of May, and Ballina the 30th of May, and we may uh, see some of you in that. So listen, thanks again uh, for logging on. We hope you found it useful and slán.